Thinking about what to study? What about performance and coaching on the doorstep of Britain's highest mountain? Or archaeology in Scotland's rich historical landscape? We offer golf degrees by one of the best Lynx courses in the world. How about engineering skills in demand across the UK? You could be taught by a team on the leading edge of marine science research. Or be involved in mixing the next breakthrough act. The University of the Highlands and Islands gives you the chance to do something different. Find out more at thinkuhi.com. Welcome to Scotland and the University of the Highlands and Islands. Our university is a partnership of 13 colleges and research institutes and was born out of a project that started 30 years ago. While we're still developing and growing, we've now built a university that is a tertiary education institution, the only one in the UK. What that means is we blend college and university education into one single institution. In this session, we'll hear about our cultural and creative industries education, which is provided across our network. Firstly, we'll hear from Professor Donna Heddle, who's based in the Orkney Islands. Then we'll have a quick word from my colleague Alison Wilson, our Head of Development, and she'll tell us a little bit more about the University and how you can connect with us. And finally, we'll hear from Anna Wendy Stevenson, who's built an internationally recognised music programme from her base in the Western Isles. Donna, thanks very much for taking the time to, to speak to us about your role in the University and what you do, and also, more importantly, the, the, the sort of diversity of the cultures of the Highlands and Islands, of which you've come across over the years. And I think really to start is, what is that diversity? across the Highlands and Islands and, and what's it like for people who don't know this area? I mean, ourselves, we know it's quite, there are lots of different influences, but, but how would you categorise it for someone who is maybe looking in for the first time? The thing is that people assume that being Scottish is just one thing. Being Highland is just one thing. It isn't. It's no accident that Scotland produced Jekyll and Hyde because we're quite used to having a number of uh, diverse elements to our um, um, ethnic identity, if you like. I myself am part Gael and part a Norse woman, um, because I have uh, my mother's from the Northern Isles and my father is from the Gaeltacht, the Gaelic speaking part of the Highlands and Islands. So we have a disparate ethnic groups and they, they basically, they mirror the waves of um, in migration um, way back in the dawn of time. We, we start, we see the very early Pictish peoples, so we have the influence of the Pictish people, who you know, was a very sophisticated society. And their language is like hieroglyphs, it's symbols. We don't understand what they're saying to us. So they, they wave to us through a, a glass darkly. We can hear them mouthing at us, but we can't understand them. So they've kind of got lost a little bit in, in the story. They're coming more to light as uh, a lot of the research that we do is, is on things like the Picts and the Norse and, uh, and so on. And then we have um, the Celts, of course. Now, the Celts originally, although the term Celtic is associated with the Highlands and Islands, of course, they originally came from Turkey and they ended up here. Uh, but they were not the indigenous peoples. It was the Brythonic peoples uh, who were here before the Celts that were the uh, indigenous peoples. Then we have the Norsemen who did not arrive on these shores with a horned helmet on their head. I can assure you of that. Very sophisticated society, a society that actually contributed more to the Highlands and Islands than people actually realise. Because the whole concept of community life, of law, for example, the term law is a Norse term. The idea of juries, um, the idea, this, the style of boat buildings that we have in the Highlands and Islands, the yawls that are pointed at both ends, they're, they're very much linked to the Norse traditions. We have a slight disjunct too, which again, I refer back to Jekyll and Hyde, you can believe two things at the one time and be two things at the one time. The, Scot the, the north of Scotland or the Highlands and Islands is essentially Celtic, but actually it's got a really strong Norse tradition, a Pictish tradition, and also, of course, we, should, we mustn't forget um, the newer um, Highlands and Islands peoples that have joined us, strong Polish community and in Easter Ross there, for example, and all the other people who come here and become new Highlands and Islands uh, members. So for folk looking at you know, coming to study in UHI, what, what does that rich cultural heritage mean for us as a university? What should we provide into the education system going forward? Well, I think we have a very unique uh, cultural identity, very rich cultural identity, as you say, Gary, and it means in the university that we can lend ourselves to a world leading type of interdisciplinary research because what we're researching is particularly in my area is the lived experience of communities past, present and future. Now we don't live in isolation, so why would we study in isolation? Why would we just study history or language or literature? 
um, in the programmes that we have, for example, we study all of these things together. All of this fits together to give us the big picture. And that's what we're doing. Because, you know, in many ways, the Highlands and Islands, it's not just a geographical location, it's a temporal location. It's a place where you go into the past and you learn about where you came from. The, the diaspora, the Scottish diaspora, is something quite unique in that way. And it has that very entrenched sense of cultural identity and geographical location. In, a, in the kind of things that we uh, research and that we um, offer as programmes, we look at all of these things. We don't just look at the facts, we look at the perceptions of the facts. We look at the story today. Where are we going with this? We're very much representing the university as it's a university of the past, the present and the future, but most of all, it's a university of the moment. What would all that you've just described mean for a student and what experience would they get and then take away with themselves afterwards? It's a very unique um, uh, student experience coming to the University of the Highlands and Islands because, as you know, Gary, we're uh, um, 13 academic partners. So a student has flexibility right away. They can uh, they can go in and study from any of these academic partners and go and do so. If, say you were an American student um, who had Scottish heritage, you could go and visit places that were relevant to you while still continuing your studies. We'll just share with you the story of our very first um, exchange student all those years ago from North America. She was actually from Canada. She was from Calgary, which is not near the sea in any shape or form. And she actually came to Orkney and she had such a good time. She didn't want to go home because she'd been so welcomed into the community. She'd been invited to everything that was happening. She'd been made to feel so very comfortable and welcome um, and that she'd really felt that what she was learning was real and genuine because it was the experience of the communities that she was studying in. Um, so a student that's coming from uh, the USA or anywhere else is coming into a, a warm, safe environment. If you're learning about history, you're looking out the window and you're seeing it. If you're learning about marine science, you're looking out the window and you're seeing those sedations. So you're getting an experience that brings you very close to the landscape. It, it, it brings you very close to the people in a way that you perhaps would not get in a standard university city. And, and one final thing, Donna, in terms of the university and its its research pedigree and what it's built over the last you know, 30 years in the making, 10 years of university. Where do we sit in the international stage in terms of this, our influence in these disciplines? Well, in my own discipline, in the last Research Excellence Framework exercise, which judges all the departments across um, the United Kingdom, we were fifth equal with Oxford for research environment. Um, so we're, we're well up there because we have such interesting and unusual research areas to, and we really fostered the concept of interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity. Interdisciplinarity means people working together across a range of disciplines to create something that's truly holistic. Transdisciplinary means where you involve the business community and, and important stakeholders. Uh, one of the things I love about our research is it's, it's culture and heritage, but it, it produces actual products that help that change people's lives and make things better. From the Highlands and Islands, to the rest of the world. That's what our research does. And of course, we're leading in terms of, of the pedagogy and the way that we teach, as well as the, the areas that we research in. And we're all about making life better for people wherever we can, um, which is why we're so highly regarded. 75% of the research that we had in the last uh, exercise was considered world leading. Well, thank you very much, Donna. Quick run through there of the, of the fantastic work that you and your team do from the Orkney Islands. And not just, of course, as we've discovered in the Orkney Islands, but across, across the world as well. We wish you well for the future and thanks for taking the time to speak to me. Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you, Donna, and hello, everyone. I'm Alison Wilson, Head of Development here at the University of the Highlands and Islands. And I'd like to thank you all for joining our Scott Week 2021 session. We hope that you enjoy this short journey with my academic colleagues through Vikings, music and Gaelic and the melting pot of influences that underpin the culture of the Highlands and Islands. That culture is something we are proud of and which runs right through this university, across our archaeology, art, Gaelic, golf, history, land-based, music, Northern and Viking studies. Our courses, students, researchers and professors all share a common purpose to have a transformational impact on the prospects of our region, its economy, its people and its communities. The university has strong connections with the United States through our US students, our university partnerships, American alumni, donors and supporters, and not least through our University of the Highlands and Islands of Scotland Foundation, 
as a 501c charity which aims to promote education, particularly among marginalised populations, the Foundation believes that providing access to higher education to the broadest range of people is vital and it wants to support our university to make that happen. The Foundation seeks to raise funds in support of buildings, academic leaders, teaching programmes and research. And the University of the Highlands and Islands is honoured to be building a community of US friends, supporters and donors. We invite our American friends to connect with and help us. This is a unique opportunity to connect to your Scottish roots as well as ignite a passion to learn more about a distinctive educational model, fascinating region and culture. Thank you. I'd now like you to hear from my colleague Anna Wendy Stevenson, who leads our globally recognised music programme all the way from the Outer Hebrides. Anna Wendy, thank you very much for joining us in this Scott Week programme with the, the stunningly beautiful background you've got behind you, which is the part of the world that you are based in, part of our region in the University of the Highlands and Islands. On that, can you tell us a little bit about where that is, where you're based? And what led you to move there? I'm based in the Outer Hebrides and the islands often referred to as the Western Isles off the west coast of Scotland. I'm in the island chain known as the Uists. I reside in North Uist, actually on a little island off of North Uist called Balashare, which has about 49 people on it at the moment. And this chain of islands is all linked by, uh, they're all linked with causeways. The college that I work for within the University of the Highlands and Islands is Lewes Castle College. Its main campus is in Lewis in Stornoway, which is the capital of the Outer Hebrides. My college campus from where I have been delivering music provision is located on the Isle of Benbecula in the Uists. What was it that um took you to move there to do the, to do your work there? I'm originally from Edinburgh and moved out to Uist in 2006 to teach traditional music. I'm a traditional musician and I've uh, had a career performing, touring. Then the opportunity came along for me to teach traditional music at Lewes Castle College in the heart of the Gaelta. And um, I've always been intrigued by the traditional music, which is really rich part of the cultural heritage, heritage of this area. And uh, so the opportunity came along and I've been uh, developing curriculum from my base in the Outer Hebrides since 2006. What influence has the music from our area, and especially as you say, from the, in the centre of the Gilta, what? What influence has that had on you and others over the years? The musical heritage is diverse, actually, even within the Highlands and Islands region. You've got the likes of Gaelic traditions, very strong singing tradition, very strong piping tradition in the, the West Coast and also in the Outer Hebrides. And then you've got uh, Shetland, the really, really strong fiddling tradition. And also you have the very strong fiddling tradition in the east coast of Scotland, but the the traditions are very distinct in each of, of the areas as well. We've got an incredible treasure really in this area of the Highlands and Islands to draw upon in our development of educational curriculum. And then in terms of the development of our students and graduates going out into the world and sharing our riches really. You run the, what we call an applied music programme. How did the applied music programme develop over the, the last 15 years that you've been there? More importantly, what reach does it now have? We started the applied music degree with the University of the Highlands and Islands, started developing and delivering that in 2012. And it's been a huge success story. It's a flagship degree for the university, partly because of the way that we deliver it. So we deliver it with a a blended learning approach. And this approach has been developed specifically to enable us to provide accessibility to students across the region. We've got students on this degree who are studying all types of music and we have students on this degree enrolled in 
um, partners, colleges across the University of the Highlands and Islands network. As the, the programme's gone along uh, over the years, we've been very successful with uh, the results from our national student survey. So we've consecutively achieved 100%. So we've got some very happy students and they're happy because they're able to develop their interests and while studying, be rooted in their communities contribute to their communities, but also be focusing on what their professional aspirations are. One of the features on the understanding of our degree programme, Applied Music, is that developing the portfolio musician, a, a set of skills, it's about developing a set of skills that enable resilience and adaptability. Finally, what is it that we do in terms of musical education? What influence does that have on the development of music around the world? Our musicians through our degree programme are able to be very flexible and mobile. And that's one of the, the key aspects as well to being a musician today. So they're adaptable and they're able to collaborate in the different locations and online. And many of our students have gone on to be taking to world stages and performing at international festivals. We see our students coming up in big national awards such as the MG album, Media Group album, BBC Traditional Music Awards. And it's wonderful to see the development of this professional level and excellence coming out of our degree programmes. And we know that, that these names are becoming names that are recognised in the music world and that are recognised not just locally, not nation just nationally, but internationally. Thank you very much, Anna. Wendy, we'll let you back to that beautiful scenery that's behind you, the glorious Western Isles. And uh, we hope that some of the people who have listened in today will be able to visit you in person someday here in the Highlands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Wendy. What a fascinating story. In the final part of this session, we'll hear from Donald J. McIntyre, our Gaelic officer or DJ as we know him. As you can imagine, the Gaelic language and culture is central to what we do here in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. What DJ will do will explain the work that we have done to preserve that Gaelic culture, and also how that work will help other indigenous languages around the world preserve their own heritage. After that, we'll hand back to our host in Scott Week 2021. So it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this short session, but please get in touch with us. Drop us a note. Come and visit us here in the Highlands and Islands or help support us. Thank you. Delighted to welcome along a DJ McIntyre, our Gaelic officer, who covers off the whole Gaelic language side of the university, working with our colleagues, obviously. But DJ, you're a native Gaelic speaker. And to, to someone like yourself, why is it important that Indigenous languages like Gaelic aren't just preserved, but are also promoted in what's really now a global world? I recognise that Gaelic is very much part of our heritage uh, culture and as myself as a fluent Gaelic speaker part of my identity in particular. I'm proud to be uh, a Gaelic speaker and it's my ambition to pass Gaelic on to others and then as far as indigenous languages you'll find that in most of these rural communities where those languages are that is very much the heartbeat of that community but having traveled abroad a few times I'm now aware as well that Gaelic is important to those who live abroad that maybe are Gaelic enthusiasts, perhaps Gaelic learners, or even Gaelic speakers. So it's not just to the communities in Scotland that Gaelic is important. It is also important globally for those that are hoping to keep the language alive, and let's hope that that will happen. As a fluent speaker, I find that I try and support the language as much as I can. Gaelic medium education is on the rise. Media coverage of Gaelic is really increasing. So those kind of things help with improving and recognizing how important the language is. And I find with speaking to those involved with other indigenous languages that it is important to get as high a profile as possible of what's happening in the Gaelic world. This way we can keep uh, promoting the language and keeping it alive and hopefully it will develop and, and stay strong in the future. What has the creation and the development of UHI done to assist with the preservation of Gaelic language and culture you know, in our region and also elsewhere? Well, the University of the Highlands and Islands contributes greatly to things like education. So, for example, we have a, a strong curriculum in place that supports Gaelic medium education, both at primary level and also at secondary level. That then 
provides a pathway for people who are learning the language to perhaps go on and have a career in Gaelic, whether that be in the traditional cultural areas of Scotland where Gaelic, Gaelic is spoken, or it could be in fact through media opportunities or educational opportunities. The university supports the Gaelic language plan, which is closely connected to a national Gaelic plan in Scotland, which came under the Gaelic Act for Scotland 2005. And that's an important point that the Gaelic Act for Scotland looks at giving Gaelic equal status to English in as far as our culture is concerned. So the university has very much supported the development and the recognition of Gaelic throughout the Highlands and Islands, but also elsewhere. We do this in many different ways. The simple things are probably by promoting bilingualism throughout the university to policy, through our publications, through our social media channels, and also through our website. But there are also other things that have a bearing on, on how we develop Gaelic and how we help communities. And that is by providing a range of courses at uh, further education level, at higher education level, but also looking at how we can support communities and working with other organisations, promote the language, and and help others in what is at times can be a struggle however um we're there for the fight and um gaelic will continue and looking to the future we've got the world's only gaelic college so Rostig. we've got a language sciences institute that then transposes that work into work around the world in indigenous languages and you've talked about the the gaelic plan that we have, we've got our own gaelic plan there's a national gaelic plan what then is, does the future hold how do we build on all the good work that's been done to date and what, how would you see the future being for Gaelic given all of that work? The university needs to look forward and work with other stakeholders in um, the promotion of things like new island plans, new island strategies. There'll be a new national Gaelic plan appearing in the very near future. So I think it's a combination of the university looking in on itself, but also looking outward to see where it can work with other stakeholders to try and build strategies and also policies that need to be updated. I think now that looking at the population migration in the last number of years, there's been a huge effect in the traditional Gaelic language speaking areas on how the language is portrayed and how the language is uh, developed in order to preserve the language. So I think as far as the university is concerned, working together and working with governments that we can build on those and actually look at what is required in the present day. And just one last final thought. People that are listening to this who have, who have got experience of other Indigenous languages and they want to preserve them, what do you think they can learn from the work that the university's done over the last few years? You know, society just changed, so we have to change with that in order to make sure that we support our, our languages. And I feel in particular there's, there's certain things we can do to, you know, to assist others in realising that you know, it can be achieved as long as you're willing to have the right people in place. And what I mean by that is you have to have somebody that's passionate about the language and you also have to have support behind that person. We're talking about things like funding the economy. How can Gaelic uh, benefit the economy? Wider national and also international achievements that can be made. For example, you can have student exchange. You can become involved with events both nationally and internationally that can promote Gaelic and show Gaelic to the world as something that, that you should be proud of, but also something that you can invest in. So there are a number of things you can do and a number of things that can promote and probably develop your, your language. At the University of Islands and Ireland, we do simple things. Like, for example, we have a Gaelic Twitter day once a year. We have a Gaelic phrase of the day where you get staff, students and others involved in just saying one Gaelic word, which I'm sure most people would recognise, something like slancha for, for cheers, for example, or very famous Gaelic word, which is, is on a lot of literature, would be farcha, which is welcome. And I'm really happy that I'm, I managed to um, get that word in a local establishment recently and that local establishment then promoted that Gaelic word and it was seen by people from all over the world. Simple things like that I think will, will assist any language, just keeping it simple but keeping it proactive. Having people involved that are really passionate and also having people involved that are really proud. And you only have to look back in history 
and you only have to look back to present day to see that all over the world you'll find place names that are from Gaelic origin, you'll find uh, names of songs that originate from Gaelic, you'll have poems, you'll have actually people's names, Christian names and surnames that come from the Gaelic language and it'll be the same in other indigenous languages. So we have to look back at our heritage and we have to look forward to the future. And I think that those small things really contribute to the survival of Gaelic and would contribute to the survival of other languages. That's all I need to say is slant I guess more in Tanga Valley. Thank you very much for your time and we'll take it from there.